welcome to Beyond the Brush Live. Today is Wednesday, March 30th, and I am Leah from Leah Noel Design Co. And this is... I am Bianca Lotus Siri Designs. And we are Beyond the Brush. We come live with you guys every Wednesday at 12 o'clock Central Standard Time, 1 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, 10 o'clock Mountain Standard Time. <laughs> We're always trying to figure out the time zones. Um, and then of course we're all over the world. So that's that's the most fun part of our job is figuring out time zones, isn't it, Bianca? <laughs> yeah, I love it. Every I, week I, I'm insecure right around the time change, but if I'm understanding correctly, come 2023, that will no longer be an issue, correct? I heard something about that, that we're not gonna have time change anymore. Yeah, I heard something about that too. So, I mean, us here in Arizona, whose times don't change, we rejoice. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how I feel about it. We'll we'll see when it happens. I mean, it's always like kind of been one of those things where people are like, why don't you do this? But then, you know, I don't know. I think like we're still going to have light here in the summer at 10 o'clock, possibly at night. You know, yeah. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Yep. Who knows? Be, <laughs> if, if it doesn't work, we can always change it back, right? I, yeah, I, I guess. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> You know, I just feel like changing time is a concept, right? <laughs> it is. Yeah. It, it It's just something we've always, I've dealt with my whole life, especially yeah. if you have little kids, it's kind of a hard, it's it's a little yeah. harder, yeah. but there's positives and negatives. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Say hi as you guys come on. We are going to talk today about using art as therapy and we are super excited. We have some really good notes and we really want to hear your feedback on this as well. This is probably one of my favorite topics for uh, right now. I, I'm so interested. I don't know about you, Bianca, but I'm so interested in how creating affects our world, our mentality, the way we perceive things and how it can better our lives. Yeah, I'm absolutely in agreement. I know that my garage, which is my studio, is my sacred place. And it's an escape because I can process the, the ins and outs of my daily life in that sacred space. And, you know, whether I've had a really good day or maybe even a bad day, the, the results from, you know, from my, the results of my sanity, really, from having this outlet of art is, is everything. Um, you know, it's, it's a really healthy outlet. So I guess, you know, instead of having unhealthy outlets, for example, you know, substances or, uh, yeah. behaviors or, um, activities that are less than ideal, I can channel my, my, my process there. Yes. Very well put. I, mm -hmm. I love the way that you said that. Cause it's so true. So a lot of people, you know, come from vices or addictions or yeah. anything like that. And they, they can find create like being creative is just a different way to, to get rid of that old used up habit that you don't need. That's not serving you and do right. something that really serves you and have a sense of accomplishment. Yep, absolutely. So what do you guys think? Viewers, um, as you come on, say hello. Let's dive into this topic. Leah and I do have a couple of questions for you before we get too deep, but we want to know what you think and we want you to engage and let us know. Um, Christine, my art has caused a spending addiction. That's true. I saw that. that that's true. Yeah. <laughs> There's that. I yeah. That. <laughs> yes. Well, you know, everything in moderation, but yeah, that's true. It's very easy to go off to the other side and go yeah. off that deep end, but I guess it's well, better than drinking yourself into oblivion. <laughs> right. And then having like a $600 bar tab that's like, yeah. you, what do you even, I, I mean, what do you even do with that? At least you have the supplies. I find myself doing that too. I find myself wanting to start something new and then going and buying all the supplies and all the things I need. Mm -hmm. And then like, I'm like, you know what? I think I'm spending more time buying the things than actually doing the thing. Yeah. <laughs> I, you're that. you're not wrong. Tell that's that's why I have three storage units. I spend more yes. time buying the furniture, and I can't keep yeah. up with it. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. 
Christine, thank you for that. You you raise a very good point and everything in moderation. So let's just put the disclaimer out there. You know, whatever we talk about about art being good, you know, you can go too far. <laughs> Leah and I know what that's like. So oh, what do you think, Leah? Should yeah, we tackle some of these questions? Yes. Uh, do you want to read the first one or would you like me to? I'll read it. Okay. So, gentle viewers, why are you here on the Dixie Bell page? And what drew you to the world of painting furniture? We want to hear from you. Let us know. Leah, you start. Answer the why question. Why am I here on the Dixie Bell page? What drew me to painting furniture? Well, you don't furniture? have to answer that one. We know why we're here. Unless you want no, to. No, <laughs> I, I think we should. Um, okay. <laughs> so, I began painting furniture. I wanted to start a business. I'm a little different than most people. I wanted to start a business. I was going to start a, a canoe rental business and it was more of my husband's dream. And then like I set everything up and then I shut it all down and I'm like, I'm not doing this. I'm going to paint furniture. And then I figured out that I could paint something. Uh, I, I started painting furniture and figuring out the colors and all of the things. And, uh, and I really just started enjoying the art of painting furniture, the seclusion of my workspace, you know, the, the time I would spend with my husband going and picking up furniture, which is still my favorite thing to this day is like going to pick up a piece of furniture with your spouse. There's something so romantic about that. Um, it's just fun. And then the whole, the, the whole process became like, I wanted to start a business, but I really found that, oh my goodness, there's so much enjoyment in creating and there's so much to learn from the process of creating. And so Dixie Bell came into my career, uh, my furniture painting career about a year into it. And I became a brand ambassador with Dixie Bell. And I just love the teaching aspect of it as well. And creating, um, I love creating with Dixie Bell because it's so versatile and there's so many different products. And you guys are awesome. Like the following that Dixie Bell has, is just so positive and uplifting and unique. And it's like a big family. Um, and I just really enjoy it. it. Then it started becoming more about like just all the people that are around you online, like in the online space, like the people that you meet. So for me, it's become a whole life transformation. And it's so many different parts of my life that um, have changed just from picking up a paintbrush and saying, I'm going to start a business. I'm going to paint furniture. How about wow. you, Bianca? Um. I mean, I'm here because I'm told to be, and I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Actually, I feel like you pretty much encompassed everything that I was thinking as far as, you know, just being a part of the community and um, really enjoying the time to engage with like-minded people, have conversations, connect, et cetera. And then, you know, what drew me into the world of painting, I've just always been the artist type and I just picked up a brush one day. I'm shortening my story quite a bit because I want to talk about what some of the viewers have to say, but picked up a brush, painted something in my home, and it just kind of evolved from there. And here I am. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I think anytime we, I think about the beginning of my story, and I think you guys will find this too, is there's so many different reasons that you started. It's, you know, yeah. there's not just one, there's so many different reasons. So, do we have any good comments? I can I can see them. So I know I can see them too. So I'm going to breeze through a couple of them that were before the question because I think that, because I want to, I want to acknowledge people. So Melinda, during a very stressful time in my life, creating time was my time to escape and reset. So I was better for those around me. And I think that's a really good point. Um, basically, because you're in this space and you're taking this time for yourself, and, you know, you're pretty much in your therapeutic space and releasing what you need to, you're better for those around you. I really like that point. Thank you, Maylinda, yeah. if, if I'm saying that correct. Sherry says, hello, Art is definitely my therapist, shall we say, and she's not cheap. No, <laughs> that is a misconception for sure that it yeah. is cheaper than a therapist. <laughs> yeah. I think it's more enjoyable, frankly. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> Patty says, hi, Patty. My life is so busy. Being able to spend time in the basement painting is the best therapy ever. Yeah. Christina says, people don't always understand why we always want to do things. So people don't always I, want to Go ahead. To do things. I, yeah. I think she's saying why we always want to do things. Because that, yeah. that, I get that too. It's like, well, no, I want to work. Well, we got to go to this party or we got to go. No, I want to work. Well, I want to sit down and watch TV with you. No, I want to work. 
I, I know. I, right, right. <laughs> Hi, Judith. Hello, Judith. Jessica's watching from New Jersey. Sandy says, Brush by Brandy started my addiction. Yeah, she's really good about starting that addiction for people. <laughs> Thank you, Brandy. <laughs> Lindsay says, hello, Jessica's in a learning process. Um, so here we go. To answer the question that we had, let's remind everybody. We said, why are you here on the Dixie Bell page? And what drew you to the world of painting furniture? Christine, I was looking for an outlet and a therapeutic experience, but through watching others, I discovered the joy of painting furniture. So I wonder, Christine, is that more like you started watching others and that was like therapy for you and then eventually you started to pick up your own brush i'm curious that's a good question yeah i'm curious too there are things that i watch online like those people that decorate cakes and cookies but i've never picked up frosting <laughs> to do <it. laughs> right. so i'm curious if it if it christine for you you know if it did carry over and now you have a brush of your own and make your own creations <laughs> and i'm also curious as a content creator like do some of you guys just enjoy watching the the videos like do yeah. you just enjoy and what are your favorite videos to watch i mean that's some great feedback too because then we can serve you better in other ways as Agreed. well so sandy says the calming of painting yeah um Donna, I'm here to learn. I've always, or, or, I'm sorry. <laughs> I have learned to paint objects like MC style and I've always wanted to paint furniture but still can't make myself start. So I keep watching, learning and painting smaller objects. My little painting craft projects so soothes my soul. Um, if I painted for others, I would be a nervous wreck. So I, I like that. I feel like I gotta sit up. Okay, here we go. <laughs> yeah, just we're just long necking it, girl. <laughs> we're gonna work our thighs today. <laughs> yeah. Um, right, okay. So so Donna's pretty much saying, like, I do this for myself, but if I had to do it for somebody else, I'd be a nervous wreck. Donna, I give you permission to continue to do it for yourself and not do it for somebody else. Amen. I love yeah. that. Mm -hmm. I think that we think that as we grow, and I definitely fell into this. I'm glad that I did, but um, you know, I started doing, you know, customs and painting for other people and selling their work, et cetera. And I had to eventually take a step back and say, you know, I don't like the customs. I just want to create for myself. So even though I create and sell my work, I create for myself in that process. Yes. And I think that's always changing too. Like, you know, what works for you, you know, what worked for me doing customs three years ago really served my lifestyle my business mm -hmm. you know my storage space well but that's not really where i need to be right now and that's not what i want to do so you're i feel like your process is always changing so donna yeah you know that what's true right now might be different a year from now if you're encouraged to, to sell your pieces um but gosh you guys i feel like in this industry maybe it's just because this is kind of the side i'm on we always feel like we have to um or i always get this feeling like okay i'm into this thing and now I have to show other people how to do it. It's like the teacher spirit of me. But sometimes you don't have to. You can just have things for you. Yep. You don't have to. You can just have a hobby. It's okay. Yep. I do that sometimes. I'll yeah, paint I, and not have a video. And yes. people are like, ooh. And I'm like, well, I needed this. Yeah. I needed to be in my space alone, you know, with my music, in my pajamas, just doing my thing. So, yeah, absolutely. Everybody can go at their own pace. So Patty says during COVID, I wanted to be creative, but it wasn't until early last summer. I started watching YouTube and I knew that I wanted to do this. If I'm Brandy, Christana, Christina Muscari, I don't know who that is. I'll have to look that up. Kasha, um, which really led me to Dixie Bell. The moment I started, I was hooked. Oh yeah. Um, it's addicting. Let's just look at just a couple more. Thank you guys for your input. Um, Lisa wants to know if I'll ever start a group again and learn so much in such a short time. I also learned much from Leah's group, got my website built because of you. Maybe. I'm we'll glad see. you got that website built. You know, I really enjoyed having the private group, but I think the timing was bad. Um, I, I really, there was something about having a group and connecting with people, um, in that, I guess, small circle. Cause I'm, I'm a creature of quality over quantity but I think the timing was bad. So um, I won't rule it out, 
but not right now. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley says it allows me to stay home with the kids. Yes, absolutely. And let's look at one yeah. more. Here we and go, show, Lindsay. Oh, go ahead. Oh, and, and Ashley had said, um, you know, show them mom can have a life too. So yes. important. I, I've always been a proponent, proponent of working from home because I want to be home. And yeah. I think it sets a good example for your kids to show exactly what you said, Ashley, to show your kids that you are important too, because the last thing that you want to teach your kids is that your world revolves around them and, or, you know, or that you're not a human being because they're going to grow up and create the same pattern. So I think it's so important for us, those of us who are, ha that have business at businesses at home to keep that in mind that you are serving your kids when you're working, especially mm -hmm. when they see you working, when they see that sale happen, those types of things, um, just on the business side, less on the therapeutic side, but that's so important. So I I'm glad you pointed that out, Ashley, because some of us need to yeah. hear that. We need to hear that, like, it's okay to teach your kids selfishness. And it's not even being selfish. I mean, you're running a business, but it's okay to have something for just you. Well, it, and it's what, oh, I can't remember who said it earlier, but it's way up in the feed, but it's what somebody said earlier. You know, because I have this, because I have my art, I'm able to, you know, be better for others. It's the same yeah. concept. Mm -hmm. It is. It is. Um, side note, I was a single mother for a long time. Work, 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 work. Um, you know, I was a manager in retail and... Oh man, it's really allowed me to, in the last, you know, my daughter's 18 now, but from 11 to 18, I've been able to be home with her, um, kind of recapture all those years that I missed. So just a little side note, I can totally relate, even though my child is no longer small. So I was going to go to Lindsay and then we'll go on to the next question. Lindsay, I started my business because my family couldn't afford new furniture 10 years ago. And then I realized it was something I wanted to share with my community. Two years later, I get to share what I do and love being creative every day. Lindsay's very good at it. You guys, uh, Raven moon revival. If you don't follow her, she's really everything that you said, uh, Lindsay, like you got your brand statement right here. You, I, I couldn't find somebody who just spoke more truly. Um, you know, it's mm -hmm. a lot of us started from not being able to afford furniture or my furniture. That was a big reason why I started. I just wanted a beautiful home. I wanted to be able to buy things. I wanted to have furniture. And then it just turned into something else. So yeah. you never know where those desires are going to lead you. Yep, it's true. Boy, I could speak to that some more, but we got to move on. I'm like, I could keep going. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny how, you know, that my I said, I'm going to cut my story short earlier. And I'm like, boy, like. You know, everybody's feedback is kind of bringing up yeah. these pivotal moments and maybe that's for another show. Anyways, next question. How many hours a week do you spend creating? This is a loaded question. It's so loaded. I'm like, I don't even know how to answer it. It depends. Depends on my 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 space, you know, am I yeah. in the mood to create? Right now I'm in a I'm in a, a dry spell. Like I don't I just don't know what to create. You know what I right. mean? Like I don't have any ideas. I don't even really have the motivation and that's okay because when I have these moments I come back and then to answer the question I'm spending all week as much as yeah. I possibly can in my space creating so right yeah it's it definitely varies like last night I went out to work I went out at eight o'clock and I came in about one in the morning but I I have to clean my shop before I work I always pick everything up and move things mm -hmm. around and then I spent time doing all the detail work. And this is kind of therapeutic for me because I was thinking about the topic and what we were going to talk about. And I spent all the time pulling out the drawers and painting the little edges and painting the backs of the doors and touching up all the little spots. Because when I create, I just create. I, I'm free. I'm whatever. Things are kind of going crazy. And then I go back and I fix all those little details. And I found that to be very therapeutic last night, just kind of going and fixing those little... It wasn't like... Because sometimes trying to come up with a design can be fun, but it also at times can be creative. So when you have that time to just like paint those little, just the things that you're sure of. I know that this drawer lip needs to be lavender. I'm going to paint it lavender. Like those types of things are so much fun. But to answer the question, I would say I spend three days a week, three hours, three days, three separate days, three separate hours actually in the zone creating so about nine hours a week creating and then the rest of the time is all the other things that come along with it painting the little details you know prepping the furniture uh creating the videos 
picking yeah. up my space, responding to messages online, writing blogs, whatever it may be. But it's about nine, I would say it's about nine hours a week for me over the years. Yeah, I think that more of my time, you bring up a good point. I don't spend too much time on the creating itself. Um, that's like the best part. And there's so much that leads up to being able to actually get to the creative process. Yeah. And then there's everything after, you know, staging, doing the lips, which by the way, that, yeah. is, not, that is not therapy to me. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, at me. all. I it hate that time. part. It had to be. <laughs> ah, boy. I hate um, staging. Yeah. The staging and the posting, the videos mm -hmm. and all of that stuff. You're right. Like it's, it's a very small amount of time that's spent on the actual creating. And I don't know about you guys too, but my favorite part is the first one. So I throw that paint on and then that piece will sit there for two weeks before I can go and put a second coat on it or something. It's like, once I get the idea out, I'm ready to move. A lot of artists yeah. say this. Once you get the idea out, you're ready to move on to the next thing. So I recently just bought a bunch of canvas and I've been doing canvas and I've just been like painting. And then I just put it aside, paint. And you know, I'm not like finishing anything, but just like, because it's, there's something about just getting that first initial, like, boom, I got my idea out. Yeah. And then that's the best part for me. What's yeah. the best part for you? Well, the boom, I, I, that I can agree with. Because, yeah. you know, once the idea is out, I am ready. And so oftentimes the pieces will kind of sit just waiting in the wings for coating, for hardware, for, you know, cleaning out the drawers and making them shiny and new and all of that yeah. stuff. Because especially when I'm in, you know, one of those periods where I can't keep up with my muse, where the inspiration keeps coming, 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 you know, I'll end up with, you know, a whole area just full of furniture, uh, furniture that needs finishing, so, yeah, I have that too. Yep. So Christine, 20 to 60 hours a week on the project or the wow. time needed for curing. So I'm going to assume for Christine that that's more than just the painting part. So Christine, are you including, um, you know, all the prep it takes and, you know, the sourcing of the furniture, et cetera? Um, Cause that's a long time. <laughs> I feel like when I first started, I spent a lot more time actually creating. I did. I spent yeah, a lot more time. That's true. In the fun part. A lot more time. Yeah. In the fun part? Yeah. In the, yeah. like, the, the, like, just painting and doing and just getting in there and doing it. Sherry, does thinking about it when I should be sleeping count? <laughs> I think so. Yes. I, okay, Sherry, I am so glad you brought this up because <laughs> a lot of people think it starts with the prep work. For, for me, it starts from the moment I, I, yeah, I get that piece and then I have to brew on it and, and it has to come, like it has to manifest itself. It has to get to the point where I can do it on a piece of furniture. So like the Alice in Wonderland piece I just created, I had that in my head since like July and it, I had it in my head and then I prepped it and then it sat prepped for, it probably sat prepped for about four months. So I actually got it on my block and then I painted it and then I sat for another two weeks. You know, I was, I, life gets, you know, there are certain things you're doing in life, but it does count when you're sleeping because that's when the ideas come to you. A lot of times it's just building in your head. Like I have another one I'm doing right now and I've had this idea in my head for since the fall, since before the transfer release. Um, so yeah, I think that it does count. I think it totally counts because that's when you're really creating it. That's when it's like, you know, it takes time for that, that idea to brew. Good point. Um, Janet says 15 to, I'm sorry, 10 to 15 hours a week, but Janet also works full time. Rhonda, I always remove the hardware prior to painting Leah. Always. So Cecilia, I can relate to your story, Bianca. My son is a senior this year, but I miss so much working as a single mom when they were younger. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Cindy loves watching us so she can learn how to paint furniture and Janet. Yeah. I was counting the whole business. So nature is, has four pieces waiting for finishing touches. Hi nature. Yeah. <laughs> nature. We are on it with you. Like that yeah. is the story of my life. Sometimes I even bring them in the living room and then I clean them in here. It's, Usually it's like, okay, take a picture. And then I do all those little details. <laughs> so if you want to see the inside of a piece after I just posted it, they're probably not done. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mine is sometimes that happens for me too. Side note, nature is is it beauty for ashes nature? Dixie Bell retailer, if anybody's watching from Arizona down in the brass armadillo in good years. So go get your D Dixie Bell goodness from nature in the brass armadillo good year. Thanks for for joining us nature. Um okay, so Let's move on. What do you think? Okay. Sure thing. Sure thing. So we are here to talk about art therapy. Leah, as organized as she is, has put together some notes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I'm just a go with the flow kind of person. Leah, you are way more organized than me Sometimes. in certain ways. Yeah. But when it comes to like our workspace. Yeah, when right. Yeah. The tech and you're like, my camera's, I'm like, okay. I know. You just look at me. Honey, I can't do the tech right now. I'm, I'm um, just grateful it's working. Um, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, um, all right. So I do have some notes. And these are things I looked up. And these are things that I, 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 I pulled from my personal experience, as well as I spend a lot of time looking into, you know, like how... How do we attract things into our lives? How do we make our lives better? And the first thing we can do is practice good feeling thoughts, right? So when you feel good, you attract more good feelings. So pretty much your, your emotional, your emotion is your indicator of how you're feeling right now. You're going to get more of that, right? Because that's your output. So when you're finding a hobby, like creating art, and creating things that makes you feel good for hours. You are in the state of feeling good and you're throwing it out there that, hey, I wanna feel good. And so when you feel good, you attract more feeling good. It's kind of the same way. I feel like people always understand it a little better when I explain it like this. Have you ever had a bad day and it's, you started off on the wrong foot and then another bad thing happened and then another bad thing happened and then another bad thing happened and then all of a sudden you're like, I'm just going to give up. I'm just going to sit down and I'm going to watch TV because I've just had a bad day and then the TV doesn't work. And then you just go to bed and then you wake up and you slow that negative momentum and you wake up and you're refreshed and you have a better day. It's the same thing with feeling good. People just usually don't recognize it. So the better you feel the better you feel. So creating <laughs> is one of those things that it gets you in that zone of feeling good, feeling at peace. And then you're just creating more and more good feeling um, and peaceful feeling things in your life. So that is one of the reasons that I wrote down that I think it's so important to create because is it, I don't know. I've never studied that, but um, light attracts light. Exactly. Like attracts like, uh, but it's, it's, it's just, I, I've found that creating is the fastest way I can get there. Bye. So I'm glad you guys are receiving that. Um, I'm glad that that's your topic. I'm working on an art journal, journaling and ther therapy. Intuitive art is such a great release. Exactly. You're releasing resistance when you're creating. I love that. I love when the timing comes together too, like for what Lisa's saying. Yeah. No, I, I definitely agree. I am one of those people. So Leah is a really good go-to for me. Um, you're a good friend, Leah. Uh, well, thank you. But, I feel the same way about you. <laughs> so I am one of those people who can get caught up in my negative and I'll sit up in there and I'll build a nest in my negative and then I just keep attracting more negative. <laughs> and before I know it, I'm just like this. I quit everything. <laughs> Um, and I don't know how many times Leah has said to me, you know, hey, hey, like snap out of it. <laughs> you know, pretty much like you're it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. You're you're what you're putting out, you're getting, you need to take yeah. a step back and reassess and start thinking positive. And it is true, you guys. Um, the minute I start thinking positive, I'm not saying it's like boom, I feel great, everything's you know, unicorns and rainbows. But it does help and it starts to begin the process and it starts to kind of tip the scales from being in that negative space to a positive space. Oftentimes when I am in that negative space, you know, it can be hard to um, reprogram your brain, especially if, you know, this is just how you are. This is just how you're wired. That is when I will go to my studio, pick up a brush and just start painting anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And that's another thing too, like even, even the prep work is the same way. It'll get you in that zone. It gets yeah. you in that place of like, okay, well now I'm ready. It starts opening up your channels to where you can freely create. Yep, absolutely. Susan's trying to be an empty nester. I'm not quite oh. there yet. Mine is still with me, but but yes, I she's been talking about getting her own apartment. Luckily, she can't afford it, so she's stuck here. She's stuck with you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Luckily, it's too expensive. <laughs> Susan, you know what? Susan brings up a good point. This used to be my motto, you guys. Fake it till you make it. And my whole thought process behind that was, you know, I, I'll put on that smile until it actually becomes me, you know? Um, so even if I am having a bad day, this, this, this used to be how I operated. Um, now I feel like I've tried, I'm trying to be more aware of like what's going on in here, but you know, I'll try to just put on that smile anyway. Um, just to kind of try to change my perspective and what I'm attracting. And eventually it just became natural. So don't let fear stop you. Everyone needs Never. Leah on speed dial. <laughs> needs a Leah. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Needs a Leah. Yeah. Not Leah. <laughs> needs a Leah. And I'm going to agree with you. <laughs> well, thank you guys. <laughs> Susan, that's really accurate. He is 27.9 years old. Your, your kid. That's oh. really accurate. <laughs> that's like those I've moms that is like, oh, he's things. 972 months old. <laughs> like what? Right, right. Oh gosh. <laughs> Susan, you're cracking me up. <laughs> Claudia Moon Powell says you must, must push forward with a smile. Leah, you're a very positive person. My first time watching uh, you, I was impressed. And the more I listened and learned Leah's story, I knew Leah was someone I wanted to listen to more. I have little pieces of note paper from Mantra Mondays in my studio. Oh, oh. I'm so glad. Lisa, mm -hmm. thank you so much. I, ap I appreciate your words so much. I'm glad you still have the Mantra Monday notes. Um, my, I have a private coaching group and the whole idea of it is mindset. It's a hundred percent mindset and how you can have all the tips in the world. You can know all of the Facebook algorithms and all the things, but if your mind isn't right, you're not getting anywhere in life. So, um, so that, that's what Lisa was talking about, which I'm going to throw a shameless plug in here. We open Monday. Um, my group opens twice a year, once in April, once in October. And I open Monday, um, Monday at 8 a.m. and then we close Thursday at 9 p.m. So seriously, that it's that time of the year again. Goodness, time it's that flies. time of the year. Yeah, I know. Wow. And uh, yep, twice a year we open. Um, and this time, I mean, we're really focusing on a lot of what we're talking about, where how to just really uh, allow your like your how your mindset affects your sales. It does. You can have all the posts in the world and all the but if you if you're not right in your head, you're not going to get any sales. Which I just experienced. I just experienced um, a, a two month period, well three months, where I had to work on my mindset to get some sales generated, and then finally yeah. I had a breakthrough, and I had five sales last week. So your mindset is really really important, um, and just taking like a lot of people, you know, just starting out as a hobby, art therapy, or just spending time on a craft, it really will, it slows you down. It slows you down and makes you think about the things that you really want, the things that matter to you when you're sitting in crocheting. Um, Cause it's not just painting you guys, it could be crocheting. You're sitting in your crocheting or you're embroidering or you're, you know, and you're really thinking about the things that you want in life. And you know, you have time to really have that self-reflection and just really be happy with being by yourself. That's a big one, right? Creativity is one of those things that a lot of us do alone. Um, and it really teaches us to really appreciate our alone time. Absolutely. I need yeah. it. I am, yes. you know, I, I'm not, I mean, sure. I enjoy being social sometimes, but for the most part, I like being alone. I like the quiet. You know, I don't, yeah. I don't need to be surrounded by people. I am fine with myself, you know, yeah. as far as company. Yeah. And, and, it, and that doesn't mean that, you know, I, sometimes I annoy myself, <laughs> especially when I'm in those, 
that mindset that I shouldn't be in. Um, but anyway, yeah, I mean, it, it's great. But I also think that if you are a person that struggles to be alone, this could also be a way to help you to get to know yourself yeah. and be comfortable with yourself. Mm hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Cla Claudia says you use a lot of energy to create. Claudia also says you're a beautiful lady. Claudia is fangirling on you. Thank you, Claudia. <laughs> I know Claudia. She's uh, She is from my hometown of Griffith, and she oh, wow. does so much community work. Claudia is, I think Claudia's form of therapy is just helping others because she is constantly just doing all kinds of volunteer work. So, and then she's always on these lives. So I appreciate you so much, Claudia. Thank you. Uh, hi, Dawn. Hello, Dawn. NTS hi, Design. Teresa. But that's Teresa, right? Okay, good. Yes, that is Teresa. Hi, she's Teresa. a content creator here at Dixie Bell as well. So if you follow NTS Design Co., um, she has a ton of content. She's constantly putting out so much content. Yeah, I can't keep up with you, girl. I know. <laughs> Um, Mary Ellen, I adore my me time. Yeah. Yes. Gotta yeah. have it. Yeah. Especially like when my daughter, she's not in school. At, well, she's in school. She's in college. Just a little bit different. But, but when she was in high school, you know, there was that time where my daughter would go to school. My husband would go to work and I just had those few hours. And, yeah. you know, as you know, the queen of the house, you know, and the the everything of this house, it was a nice time to not be responsible for people too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, you know, I, well, I got married when I was 20 and we, I've had kids since I was 18. You know, my husband had kids, but I've always had alone time because they either, you know, back in the day they, they would, they would, you know, be at their mom's or they, or, you know, they would just go to school and I've always had out, I've always had my days to myself by myself and I wasn't giving that up for a job or anything else. I love the alone time. It's, it's my favorite. Like that is my family knows it all of mm -hmm. them. <laughs> so yeah. I'm curious, you guys, um, how many of you have had a bad day or for example, needed, you know, what Leah was talking about to shift your perspective or shift your, your mindset into a positive space. How many of you have actually went into your space, picked up a picked up a brush, started painting something, and just felt that resistance melt away and actually experienced what we're talking about? Experienced, you know, that that release through your art. Um, share with us, you guys. Let us know. Have you experienced it? And and how did you feel walking away from it? As well as, you know, how has that been sustainable for you um, moving forward? I think a lot of people come home from work and paint. I hear that a lot. Yeah, um, I hear that too. Especially diving into like the <clears throat> canvas, like just learning about canvas and stuff, because canvas has been a fear of mine for a long time. And I just started diving into it for a new, for a new and fresh perspective. And I hear that a lot in that is I just started painting after work. And I, yeah. I think a lot of people use it as a stress relief. It's, you know, some people, you know, watch TV, other people paint. Yeah, that's true. I um before this being my career, I was a wedding photographer. Uh that was pretty short lived. <laughs> I got burnt out. So, but yeah, I mean, I'd go, I'd shoot a wedding. I know I had to come home and work on these pictures, but I just wanted to paint. Like, I don't need to edit those pictures. I just want to paint. You know, I had to really police myself. <laughs> yeah. To get in there and edit those pictures because I really just I needed to get this this release from painting. Yeah, absolutely. So Teresa says, when my stepmother passed away, uh, painting was a lifesaver. I poured my emotions into furniture. Yep. Actually, that's a really Such good a healthy way. point. Because grief comes in many different forms, whether you lose a loved one, a job, a house, a marriage, a friendship, a career, you know, whatever. Grief comes in many different forms. Okay, so when we're talking about art being therapy, what Teresa is saying, you know, I had to deal with my grief and I did it through painting furniture. I did it through the art therapy of, of painting furniture. So that's a really good point. It's a great point. Mm -hmm. Donna says, sometimes I feel bad when a piece doesn't turn out the way I envisioned. Thoughts on that, Leah? I love that you said this. This happens a lot. It's it's a time process. Like 
you know, a lot of times you guys think like, you know, let me take the Alice piece last week for an example. I posted, I last Wednesday, I was really sick. I didn't have any content. We didn't do beyond the brush. And I went out to the garage. I'm like, I'm just going to take a picture of this and post it. Cause I post on my Facebook page every single day. So I posted it. It was, it was in the process and the post did very well. That's besides the point. My point is um, that piece took me a long time because it was a lot of, there's a lot of, like I talked about earlier, I touched on, there's a lot of space between that where it took time. Um, You know, so give yourself time. If it doesn't turn out the way you envisioned, that's okay. Just keep moving forward. So right now I'm also working on another piece. It's a curio cabinet. I want to burn it. And it, um, I've, you know, I've been doing this watercolor technique and it's just not turning out. It's not turning out. And it's been sitting, I've been working on it for two to three weeks. Finally, my husband came out and said, you know, just said to me, um, you, you have to paint that like Ursula. And I go, oh my gosh. And it clicked. So when a piece isn't turning out, what I like to do is I like to put it in timeout. And then I just wait for that moment. Maybe that inspiration comes to me on a walk. Maybe it comes to me um, through a conversation. Maybe it comes to me from someone coming through the door and going, you should paint that like Ursula. Now I can't get that out of my head. You know, yeah. so give it, put it in time out. Just put that piece in time out. Because a lot of people will say, well, just paint over it. Well, here's the thing. When you've been painting a piece and you are so frustrated with it, you can't just paint over it because you're just so ticked off at that piece. Like that piece, you want to burn that piece. I get it. Put that piece in time out. Put it in time out. Pull it back out. I've done this where I've put a piece in time out and I've pulled it out years later. Sometimes it just sits yeah. in my shop till, and I look at it every day till somebody says something really silly. Um, and then I'm like, okay, that's a great idea. That's what I'm going to do. So just put it in time out because the piece yeah. is making you mad. That piece is full of like negative energy. Yeah, right. It's, it's, it's maddening. Mm-hmm. Go put that thing away and pull a different piece out and just don't, don't worry about it. I think a lot of times too with furniture, cause it's bigger. We think we have to finish one project before we start another, which is a good thing. But if that piece is causing you frustration, it's defeating the whole purpose of being out there to yeah. in the first place. So stick it in time out. <laughs> I'm so glad that you brought this up, Donna. Thank you, because I actually have a piece that needs to go in time out. So thank you, Leah, for that permission. It's like, I know this, but I still need reminding. It's, um, yeah. And it's keeping me from moving on because I want to finish it before I move on. So now right. I'm not doing anything. So maybe that's where my blockage is coming from. So thank you, Leah, for the permission to put it in time out. So oh. we're getting a lot of comments about, um, you know, when people, you know, in the grief portion of this. So, oh, really? Um, yeah, Mike Lois. So when my husband Mike passed away, I needed something. Furniture was my therapy. Nature. When my dad passed, it took me weeks to allow myself to go into my paint to go into my space. And create again. I had to get my mind straight and allow myself those moments where I lose myself instead of taking care of him or funeral arrangements or taking care of my family. And all that goes on through losing someone. Painting has always been a stress relief for me. Absolutely. Um, I have had people pass away. Actually, this piece, you can't even see it behind me, but it's it's hot pink. Um, It's dark back there. But that was when a friend of mine died, you know, and he loved pink. And I always thought you are so secure in yourself, you know, a man that loves hot pink. I love that about him. You know, he's just like, I like what I like. And that's that. And um, so I painted a piece in hot pink and I've had ever since that's been four or five years ago now. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 I, I, it is, it's, it, it, I never, I guess I haven't had that experience as closely, but I totally understand that it would get you through that grief process. Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Absolutely. It could be so easy to, to bottle up grief and not want to face it. So yeah. If any, and again, grief comes in many forms. Grief could even just be from having a bad day. So it can. Yeah. Get in there. Maybe I think a lot of times you're, you know, maybe that's what it is. You're a lot of times you're even like just processing things. You don't even know it. And it's just like, yeah, you know, I mean, and think about that. How many times are we, like doing things that are good for us and we don't even know all the benefits you know when you know the benefits they benefit you more but you know there's a lot of us that are staying balanced by painting and we don't even know it yeah that (laughs) is so 
True. Claudia says we all need positive reinforcement, encouragement, and kindness. Yes. Teresa says, OMG, I have like five pieces going on right now. Squirrel. Me too. <laughs> yep. Mike uh, or Lois um, says, I love that. Time out furniture. Yeah, I love it too. I needed to hear that. So anything else, Leah, um, as far as this topic? Because I want to open it up. We want to open it up for Q&A. Um, the one week that we ran out of time and didn't make time for Q&A, we got the, oh my gosh, I've been waiting for Q&A. So let's not make that mistake again. So what, what is Q&A? Q&A is ask us any question about anything, you know, obviously related to the furniture painting world. It can be, you know, techniques. It can be product questions. It can be, you know, whatever. Ask away. So we'll do that as soon in like the next three minutes. So Leah, let's wrap up the art therapy portion of the, the program. You know, I, let's just wrap it up here. Yeah. I think that the most important thing that you're getting out, well, what I get is the sense of accomplishment. When I finish a piece, yeah. I sit and it, 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 the most, like you are so powerful when you're creating. Mm you are so stinking powerful that a lot of times like you know that's the thing is like that painting means more to the artist the the piece of furniture means more to you than it will to be any, anybody else of course they're gonna love it but there is that moment you guys all know it where you just sit back in your chair and you're like look at that piece i just created and i'll sit there for like 20 minutes and i'm just like i will yes. appreciate what i created <laughs> yes so if you're not doing that, I encourage you to do that. Like, and that's how you really know you're on the right track. You just sit back and you're like, oh, man. the way the paint fell right there in that part. I don't even know how I did that. <laughs> <laughs> the sense of accomplishment. Can you agree? Oh, yeah. absolutely. I drive my family crazy and I don't care. I am shameless because my love language <laughs> is affirmation. Okay. So yeah. I need that. So I, I I don't care. They'll be walking by. I'm like, you see that? You see that? You see that? I like, that You've too. already I'll showed me. I'm like, I don't care. Look at it again. You're going to feed me what I need. Listen, I keep you fed. Yes. You keep me fed. So yes, but I'll, I'll stare at it. Yeah. Um, even when I, you know, it's, it's done, said and done. It's no longer here. It's in storage. You know, I'll stare yeah. at the picture. Yeah. You know, exactly. It, <laughs> it is. It's such a sense of accomplishment and anyone that's created something, you know, that it, it could be with anything. It could be, it could be a room you designed. You're just sitting yeah. there like, I did this. The I did this factor. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so open Q&A, you guys. What are your questions? I see a couple of them trickling in. Leah Donna says, I looked at your woman. I looked at your woman's cigar box forever. Do you have a woman's cigar box or was that for me? Because I have one. That is you. It's me. Thank you. <laughs> Hey, I have a cigar box. Hey, from our, oh um, gosh, look, you guys, we did from that. Our show. She said cigar box. So I'm like, oh, I'll. Oh, it came out so pretty. Yeah, that was what? I love three these weeks are ago? fun. This is the therapy because this is just fun. Um, small little things, especially when you start having a business or doing bigger pieces, and it becomes. This is like, oh my gosh, that sense of accomplishment. I just did this. I'll probably give it to my mom. <laughs> it's my so mom pretty. Everything. Oh, um, that came out really nice. So thank you. if you guys missed that, Leah worked on that live while I kind of heckled in the background. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway. I, we should do that again. That was enjoyable. Yeah, it, it was. And, and that was what, maybe three, four, four beyond the brushes ago, something like yeah. that. So you guys can catch that if you want to. Open Q&A. We'll do this for the last 10 minutes of the show. Patty is first up. Patty says, how do I get past being a perfectionist? I, <laughs> I'm laughing because, yeah, I'm a Catholic schoolgirl and was taught not to color outside the lines. Help. <laughs> oh, I'm going to let Leah I'm, answer this for you because I actually need to hear the answer too. Oh, yeah. I'm really bad Yama's about this. Yama's a perfectionist. She is, you are, and, and, and it's, I know. and you're good and you're good at what you do. I am not a perfectionist. And I think not being a perfectionist is one of my strengths. Um, yeah. perf <laughs> um, <laughs> not to, but you know, that's the thing is I find that perfectionists are always asking, how do I not be a perfectionist? Yeah. Um, I want you to recognize that perfectionism is a form of fear. It's a form of 
being fearful of putting yourself out there and being rejected for it. So perfectionism is a form of fear. So sometimes, you know, of course, you know, I, I feel a hundred percent that my work it's quality. It is, you know, it's quality work. I paint my drawer edges. I pay attention to the details. I put my best foot forward. But I took a picture of this last night. When I'm finishing a piece and I'm painting all the edges and I see a little booger, like a little booger on the, the front of my drawer, I have to leave it alone. I have to leave it alone. It, it kind of drives me crazy. They don't come up often or like a brush hair in a weird spot. Yeah. As long as it's like not front and center, it's just part of the piece. Um, not to say that I that those things don't happen often, but sometimes it's better to just leave them than to try and fix them and then you mess them up and then you're having a bunch of stress and it's not worth it. So the way I get over it is my tops, for the most part, are perfect. They're 98% perfect. There might be like a little white speck here or there, something only I would notice. Um, the other thing is stand back from your piece about, you know, arm's length away. No one is coming to your piece and going, oh my goodness, do you see that brush stroke right there? No one's getting like this with your piece like you are. You're you're really close <laughs> to your piece, right? You're like this. Anyone else is like this, their arms length away. So what can so that little booger I talked about um on my piece, it, and it's not even it's not a booger, it's not as bad as it sounds, but you can't see it from arms arms length away. So if I'm sitting three feet from it, I cannot, I can't see it. So arms length away, your top. I just make sure my top is 98% perfect um, and streaking. Everyone always asks about streaking. You know what, you guys? Streaking, uh, you know, like not like mega streaking, but the little streaks that you see in like certain lighting, <clears throat> it's a hand-painted piece of furniture. It is a hand-painted piece of furniture. If your customer wants a perfect piece of furniture, tell them to go to Ethan Allen. They're not paying for a perfect piece of furniture. They're paying for hand painted, one of a kind artisan pieces, piece of furniture. Um, so keep that in mind when you're, when you're going through your perfectionist, when you're going through your perfectionism. Um, that is sound because I'm really bad at that. And honestly, it was Patty that asked that. Let's go back up. Um, there we go. Yeah, it's a struggle for me. I have literally had to learn to leave that booger, booger alone, you know? <laughs> yeah. I've had to, and it's still, it's hard, but it's getting easier. So I think really practice makes perfect. If you're aware of something that you know is actually crippling you, for example, being a perfectionist, yes. you know, it, it's really hard, as I said earlier in this show, to reprogram our minds it's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen one, in one sitting. But what we can do is just be aware of the thought process um, that we are trying to, to create and the things that are hindering us. And really just, you know, just practice makes perfect. So every day I might pick one thing that I need to just let go and not worry about. Oh, that's really good, Bianca. It's I like love that. One, and and it, that's really helped me a lot. I'm still a perfectionist, but I've just learned to start to try to just be more accepting because Leah's right. Ain't nobody looking at that like that, but me. Right. You're getting so close to it. Yeah. You're just, mm -hmm. um, it's like your kids too. Think about, I always think of things with my kids too. Like you're looking at all their bad bit because you're so up close and personal with them, but everyone else is like, Oh my God, they're so wonderful. They're great. And you're like, Oh, you don't yeah. see them at home. Yep. It's the same thing with your furniture. Yep. One day at a time. <laughs> One booger at a time. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep the oh gosh, up. Linda. Yes. And every time I attempt to fix a booger, it always makes it worse. And I end up redoing something. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Yes. You're yes. so right. It's like trying to peel a hangnail, right? And then you just end up like ripping your skin down to here. Oh, Leave it, it alone. <laughs> too much oh my gosh. too far yeah <laughs> no that, that i'm just a baby <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh um any other open q a questions you guys we have just a couple minutes left <laughs> oh i love this mimi said she likes the streaks somebody said um thank you donna donna says uh she loves the women pieces and i love your box too yeah what did somebody say i can't find it what did i Okay, well, it's okay. Um, I can't find it, but somebody oh. said that, like, it's fine if it's somebody else's imperfection. I, I love it, but if it's my own, I don't. 
I could so relate to that. Like we if had I'm looking- that happen to us. Remember when I came and painted with you and we painted your yes. buffet? And I yes. said, I hate that spot. We got to yep. fix that. And you said, that's my favorite spot on the whole piece. And I'm it like, was, yep. okay. And then we took it and it turned out beautiful, but it was just somebody, it's, it's, it's perception. Perception yes. is everything. And guess what? Every time I look at that piece, I look at that spot and I smile. Because there you that, I do. <laughs> because yeah, it's imperfect. It, it truly is. But that was kind of my, we have to leave that there because that's a part of my journey. Yeah. Oh, you God. know, as I a perfectionist, that. Yeah. like that's looking at that spot and embracing it and accepting it. And, you know, it just, yeah. I don't know. It's, it, it's helped me in my journey to not be a perfectionist. So good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Susan says it's almost a relief when others are, in, um, have imperfections because then I know that we're okay. Yeah, that's true. We should post about that more. I feel like a lot of times we think like, oh, it's so perfect, but you know, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's beautiful and it is almost perfect, but there is always imperfections. Our, our, our choice of canvas starts with imperfections. It's not like we're starting with a clean canvas. We're starting with things that need repairs and everything else. So yeah. Yeah. Just know we have, we experience paint boogers. We'll have a dried hair on a yeah. piece of furniture. And we have all those things that happen to our, and by paint, I mean, for the most part, it's, smooth. I mean, there's, I feel like, I feel like beginners a lot of times have this unrealistic expectation because we're putting forth our best work and the progress and you can see it in the photo. Um, but I really like to go to like, if I, if I would, if I'm struggling with perfectionism, like some of you guys are, I like to go to booths and stores and then I go, yeah. okay, okay. Right. This is the same. It, it really puts things in perspective for you too, because it's just, it thing, you know, nobody's work is perfect. No, it's not some of the, but, and it's not like I can still find something wrong. So Sherry, I was very much a perfectionist when I started, but I tried a vintage rustic piece and found my happy there. Uh, There was no stress. That's full on art therapy to try a rustic piece. Um, If you're a perfectionist, you'll find it more enjoyable. You are so right. That's why I started stippling paint. Yeah. Or texture. Yeah, yeah, texture. That's why I started. You're so right. Um, and now it's my favorite method because, you know, when I top coat, I don't have to worry about dust getting and, and being like super visible or, you know, yeah. like, oh, there's a tiny little streak there, you know, texture, stippling, blending, um, et cetera. It's just, it takes the stress away. So that's a really good point, Cherry. Julie says, I'm working on a custom job right now. I really need to hear this. Thanks, ladies. Julie, Julie you're welcome. You are so welcome. I'm glad that helped. Christina, I thought you were leaving. (laughs) That wasn't (laughs) you, right? She can't, right, right. Um, But Christina has a really good point. It's not always the destination. Enjoy the journey. Perfect. Um, And Georgina, my son, is my critic. He'll always notice. Get rid of him. Yeah, just get rid of him. (laughs) Who needs him anyway? (laughs) We're kidding. Okay, we're kidding. <laughs> Definitely keep your son. I feel like in this world, you know, you know, like disclaimer, we're kidding. It's we're a kidding. joke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That concludes our show. Leah, carry us out. Thank you guys. <laughs> it was so fun, you guys. <laughs> it was, it, this was a really fun episode. Thank uh-huh. you guys for joining us. We love talking to you guys each and every week. I love getting to know some of you guys better as you guys keep joining each week. It's nice to see your names keep popping up. Um, if you have a question or you have a topic idea, send an email to be on the brush live at gmail.com. Uh, you could always reach out uh, to me. I don't know about you, Bianca, but uh, Facebook Messenger, if it's easier, just reach out to me I on my business you. page. Yep. Yeah, just reach out. Uh, we always receive our messages there as well. Sometimes it's easier than sending an email, but we encourage you to send an email if you prefer that. Other than that, we'll be back next week at um, 12 o'clock Central Standard Time and all the other time zones. And we will see you then. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Bye, week. everyone. Thank you.